Now we're in Michigan. It's October 1st and we're hunting the bow season opener. And uh, we've had uh, rain all day, off and on. In fact, we, we dried out during the middle of the day. We had some severe thunderstorms, lots of uh, flooding around the area. Farm fields are flooded. And uh, we took that opportunity. It started raining late morning. We switched in locations in the rain, had a pre-planned -pre tree picked out for us to climb into. And, uh, and then we let it soak out, wash away our scent, and then we snuck back in here after the rain cleared. We have about a two and a half hour hole that we're hunting right before dark where there's no rain. And uh, you know, that's a great strategy in itself. I love using the rain to enter my stand. I love using the rain to set up a calm period when it stopped raining. The acorns are falling all over the place. We have a little sun coming out right now. And this is a great time to hunt. While we're doing all this, we uh, came into this area and there's fresh grape. It's fresh grape and where we were at too. A lot of times, right now, there's a temptation I'd like to see you avoid. And that is to you see a fresh grape, it might be a perennial scrape that's opened up, and you immediately go through a trail camera on it. To me, that's no more, that's no different than you have a food plot right now, it's grown great, deer hitting it, and you go slap a box blind on the side of it and expect to go out and bow hunt five days later and have those same deer and those same bucks that are hitting the food plot come back out. A mature buck especially, he picks out those trail cameras. How many times have you guys had a buck that comes in, looks at a trail camera one time, and then doesn't come back? We have really hidden trail cameras. When we have a buck that looks at the trail camera, We've often had that trail camera on a mock scrape for months at a time. A lot of times we're starting our mock scrapes in June. But our trail cameras are hidden. They've been there for a long time. And so when a buck looks at it, a lot of times he's just looking through it. You'll see he'll just go back to scraping like it's no big deal. But so many times a mature buck looks at a trail camera and takes off. So the worst thing you can do is you find a fresh scrape. And there might be even several bucks that are using that scrape, especially if it's a perennial scrape. It's on the way to food, it's between bedding and food, it's near food, whatever it might be, it's in the woods, it's hidden. And that buck's coming through. The worst thing you could do, a lot of times, is go slap a trail camera on it. For one, you're adding scent to the area. Two, you're adding sound to the area, getting close to scrape. You know, you might be putting that out, you might be snacking the lid, making some noise, putting some battery trays in it. And then three, they can see it. And so if it's not completely hidden, and you're, and you're leaving scent around, you're taking an area where all the bucks in the area that are moving through that spot could potentially be attracted to, and now you're just alerting them. They put a camera nearby, you left your scent, and you could destroy an area. And when you destroy a movement like that, it doesn't just destroy it within 10 yards or 20 yards. I found it destroys it within 100 yards. Those mature bucks will go around that area. And some will stop using that movement altogether. They'll go to another food source to bedding movement or bedding area to food source or bedding area, bedding area, cruising area. They'll just flip all together. So very, very careful. And you'll notice that too. You'll find a perennial scrape, opens up, bucks are using it, you put a camera on it, all of a sudden the picture you're all getting or at night, you're thinking, well, they're just nocturnal right now because it's the October law. Folks, the October law, like I just had in a previous video, happens because of hunting pressure. Now there's habitat shifts, type of habitat, fall habitat, but largely the October lull happens because of hunting pressure. When you're seeing deer come into your camera in, in the middle of the night on a scrape, that means it came from a half mile away, three quarters of a mile away. It took a long time to get there. That's why it's the middle of the night. He's not on your land. He's not just sitting back there 300 yards on an old waiting to come to the camera. Mock scrapes we use. The best time to put mock scrapes out and to put a camera on it is June, July, maybe even August, where you can make a scrape, a high quality scrape, put a camera on it, hopefully hide the camera. And by the time it gets into the meat of the season, not only are you getting a lot of great pictures, but your scent's gone, the amount of sound it took to put that camera in is gone, and you're way ahead for being able to get a good intel Unscraped. I would never wait for a scrape to open up to put a camera on it. You need to determine when a deer is going to use that scrape, that mock scrape. We like the vertical vine scrapes. If you look up vertical vine scrapes on Google, I own that. As far as my content comes up at the top of Google, comes up at the top of YouTube, 
I have a lot of information. I started doing that, originated that strategy a long time ago, where you're putting a hanging vertical licking branch in the form of a vine, white oak, beech, jack pine, whatever a buck's favorite rubbing tree is, you can use that. I'm using a four to five foot branch, three quarter inch to one inch in diameter, whether it's a vine or a branch. And then I'm hanging that so the bottom of it's about waist high, typically. And, uh, and, and then I usually have one to three feet of rope. Uh, for reference, I usually stand at the rail of my pickup and work that about, tie it about chest level on a branch, and that's about right. You tie it to an overhanging branch, you can tie it to an overhanging rope, you can tie it to a leaning tree. There's a lot of ways to get the job done in a specific spot. You can even make a hoop scrape, which I originated a while back, where you just take two saplings, you tie them together at about seven feet high, and then you hang the scrape from there, eight feet high, whatever it is, and then you hang the scrape from there. A lot of ways to get the job done, but you're determining when those bucks use it. You're determining many months in advance or weeks in advance that they're going to get used to any scent that you left behind, any sound that it took to put it in there. If they saw you putting it in, you're taking that out of the equation because they have about a three to four week area of forgiveness. After a while, they'll forgive your intrusions and what you did. You determine where they go in that scrape. You determine when they open it up. Most 90% of the scrapes I'm putting out in June, July, they're opening up right away. No scent on the licking branch and no scent on the actual scrape area itself, except maybe you pee on it a little bit. The licking branch itself, imagine the accumulation of dozens of deer that are rubbing their preorbital glands on there. And that scent that's on the end of that hanging vertical branch, we use, I like the hanging vertical branch because every doe, fawn, and buck that walks by at that level on a trail, you put it right in the middle of the trail, they're gonna use it. You have that camera on it ahead of time, it's hidden six feet high, it's on a tree that's wider than the camera, the profile's hidden by another branch nearby or log or shrub, and you can determine exactly what kind of intel and census you can take in October and November on a scrape. Determine that weeks in advance, months in advance, not when it suddenly pops up in early October. We backed out of that scrape area. I don't want to touch anything around it. We already snuck into the area. I don't want to do anything to spook those deer around that scrape. That's an invitation and attraction for multiple mature bucks or bucks to come into that area. The last thing I want to do is educate them. So you make sure weeks or months in advance that you have that camera set, ready to go, and you determine when those bucks use that scrape, not the other way around.